and webinars where we come in and we try to educate our clients and, and potential partners and prospects on what we feel are really uh, valuable technologies in IT overall. Today what we focused on is voice over IP. So we're going to talk about your voice over internet protocol. Uh, it's a very it's not really new, but it's a way of handling your phone calls that really adds a lot of dimension, a lot of different features to your business's call handling. Some of the things today that we're going to cover are, are going to be uh, voice over IP, exactly what is it. I let you know it's obviously an acronym, a lot of acronyms in this, uh, in this industry. Uh, voice over Internet Protocol. Instead of getting those old copper, they call it POTS, plain old telephone service lines coming into your office, what we're talking about is maybe seeing and analyzing if it's going to offer any benefit and cost savings to you to take those phone calls and direct them through your data traffic as well. You need data anyway, so let's see if we can maybe, you know, put your call handling through that as well and give you a lot more benefits, options, and maybe some cost savings in between there as well. What's the difference between voice over IP and IP uh, technologies? We talked a little bit more, and we will obviously dive a little deeper that as we go uh, further in this presentation. The difference between hosted and on-premise phone systems. You may be saying to yourself, well, a phone system is a phone system. I pick up a phone, I dial buttons, and it calls someone else. Yes, uh, but there are different ways to get to the same result, really. What are some of the pros and some of the cons of both ways of uh, handling your telephony in your office and small business? How can it help your small business? Are there other features? Are there other things that are done besides cost savings? Is it going to help you work more efficiently, be more access accessible on a day-to-day -day basis? How is the introduction of voice over IP in your small business going to help you maybe uh, retrieve more clients, keep more clients, and provide better customer service at the end of the day? Uh, options, capabilities, we're going to go into some of those, and features. And uh, what many people are thinking, and probably the question we get most, uh, because that would be a no-brainer, right? If I can save money and also get a new phone system, how can we do that? Uh, yes, there are many ways and, and many clients that we have to save them money. So what we'd like to do is take a look at what you're paying for your plain old telephone service and your, they call them the POTS lines or your copper analog lines coming in and, and seeing if there is some benefit and, and actual tangible cost savings right away. Because we definitely know that there's a lot of intangible efficiency savings and obviously time is money so there's a lot of savings there but let's see if we can also put something uh you know that you can see on your on your balances sheet and uh finally 10 pr best practices for moving to cloud pbx and hosted pbx meaning there's no phone system in your site there's a phone system that's somewhere else that's backed up that has business continuity uh, and you're basically just paying a monthly fee for that service with unlimited call calling. All right. And can you use voice over IP without being hosted? How can you host your own voice over IP phone system? Uh, how do you utilize, maybe you have multiple locations and you want to uh, use a hybrid type of system where you can utilize potentially the, uh, the lines that you already have. Let's say you already have a PBX system. And in your office, it maybe doesn't make sense to, to rewire everything. Well, that's okay because there are solutions as well where you can utilize what you already have and uh, while building for the future, future growth, uh, especially if you have multiple offices. Uh, exactly what we're going to co cover, we're going to explain the phone systems and their capabilities while saving your money. We kind of went through that as well. And um, my name, again, is Kevin Kirby. I've been at MVP here now for six years. Uh, you know, time flies when you're having fun. It seems like I, I just started yesterday. And uh, on that note, I'm going to also turn a lot of this presentation over to Ikram Nasabini, the CEO of MVP Network Consulting. Um, Ikram is obviously, you can see all the certifications, including the big one here that we're talking about is a, uh, a bias certification. Um, so a lot of uh, schooling, a lot of thought, a lot of brain power goes into the solutions that we create here, uh, not only on the sales side, but also on the engineering side. Ikram is an engineer, so uh, we, we kind of go from the service side first and we develop the best solutions that we can for our partners and articulate that and then go out there and, and, and try to, um, you know, get you to, to, to buy into this as well because it really will help you in the long run. So uh, on that note, I'm going to turn it over to Ikram uh, with some, you know, intermittent chime-ins and, uh, and things like that. But here's Ikram Massivini. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the presentation today. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Hello, everybody. Uh, like I said in the beginning, I'd like to make this a uh, into a uh, 
a presentation where you could ask questions at any time. So if you're curious, please ask questions. Send us a chat message with your questions, and we'll answer them as soon as possible. And like Kevin said, today we're going to talk about phone systems, voice over IP, phone technology in general. We're going to break it down, explain it to you, give you the pros and cons of hosted versus on-premise versus hybrid, what to look for, what will work for you, because one bullet uh, won't fit every single gun. So it's a truly a um, approach of education in this webinar, really showing you uh, and giving you information and questions to ask and uh, to, to make you uh, an an educated consumer so that you know if a new phone system, a new, uh, how people call it phone system, really for me it's a communication uh, infrastructure that we would build because you could, you're able to do so much more with the phones nowadays and we'll show you some features and some capabilities that you may not know it even exists. All that by looking at your bottom lines and making sure that you're able to save money. But we can't have bad quality of service. There are some caveats in place that we'll look at. So uh, we'll start with uh, what is voice over IP? As Kevin said, it's voice over internet protocol. IP stands for internet protocol. It's the unique identifier uh, that every single device that connects through the internet must have. Uh, it's a technology that utilizes a company's local network to make and take phone calls over the internet versus traditional phone lines. Uh, so that's what voice over IP means. Uh, Voice over IP is built to be sold really through IT providers because how it affects your network. When you put the voice over IP system in place, it affects your data, it affects your applications that you're using on your network because you're really running voice now on the same cable that your data is traveling on. So there's some stuff that needs to happen on your network that are very important that uh, is, is recommended to make sure that you don't have bad quality, that you don't have... Uh, jitters and, and uh, drop calls. Well, one of the things I'd like to point out also, now that we have both of our voice and data flowing over the same network, is one of the capabilities of voice over IP is being able to integrate in some of the systems and applications that you're already using. Uh, for example, let's say that you're using Outlook or you're using something else for a, a CRM or customer relationship management. If you have their number and their data saved with the voice over IP system, you can integrate that into a lot of those applications where you may have a screen pop. When that caller calls in, it automatically bolts onto your application. It opens that client's information so you know exactly who it is and you can, you know, increase some sort of customer service levels. Okay, thanks. Uh, next, so now there's voice over IP that everybody's talk about, but there's also something called IP telephony. And there's a distinct difference between them. People use those terms interchangeably. So the term IP telephony and voice over IP are often used interchangeably, but there is a difference you, must be, you need to be aware of when making a purchase decision. IP telephony is running an IP-based phone system on your network, just like voice over IP, but IP phone system can also connect to older analog lines, can also connect to uh, digital lines or voice over IP providers to provide you uh, to make that call. So IP telephony, is there's a, a, a distinct difference here that we'll be talking about. And I want to really show you the difference so that when we talk about the phone systems themselves and their capabilities, you understand the difference between an on-premise, a hybrid, and a hosted. We'll get into that in more detail like Kevin explained earlier. So businesses are using the phone system, uh, sometimes called an IP PBX. That's an, uh, a phone system that's located at your facility, and that, that leverages the Internet protocol to, to replace traditional phone systems in your office. So IP telephony is running IP-based phones on your network, but that does not mean that it's making the calls through the Internet. I uh, just wanted to drive that point home. So what is the difference between an IP a telephony and a voice over IP? We put a little layout here. Uh, and if you look here, it says businesses are now using IP phone systems uh, to leverage the phone, the, the network that they have, because we want better integration between your applications and your phone system. And in order to do that, your phone system and your voice calls uh, need to travel over the same cable. Uh, so when we... So basically what we're saying is whether being a hosted phone system, which is meaning as a phone system that doesn't reside at your facility, you're renting, it resides at the provider's facility, All the only thing that resides at your facility is actual phone, the phones themselves, 
and the phones themselves then go through the internet and we configure the phones to say the phone system is located there and we give it the IP of that phone system somewhere else. And you're making the call by going through the internet, hitting that phone system, and that phone system has lines associated with it that make the call for you. In IP telephony, the phone system is in your facility, still running over IP, still has the full capabilities, but it, the phone system is actually purchased. You're not renting it, and it's located at your facility. And we'll get into details of that, pricing and everything that has to, comes along with it. I just wanted to give you a distinct difference between both, and so that way you can understand what's, what's available for you. So the two options, there's three options. One, something hosted completely by somebody else. One on-premise is hosted completely by you, and one is a hybrid that runs on your IP base a network, but you own the system and it connects to a voice over IP provider. It's a hybrid, it's a, it, so that's something that we'll look into. So what do you need to know about hosted phones? Uh, so businesses, in our opinion, should not suddenly jump into voice over IP migration projects uh, because of their sheer complexity without really doing homework first. Uh, you need a phone system and an IT company to make sure your implementation is successful because we got to look at different things on your network to make sure that your network is able to support voice over IP. Uh, so on cloud hosted voice over IP, you are only good as your weakest link because you are making a call that goes through the internet and the internet is not, real, it depends on uh, your latency and, and depends on the time it takes for that initiation of the call to go to that provider to make that call for you and for the call that comes back, there's a lot of moving parts that has to happen and has to happen simultaneously. So if your internet speed is slow, if you have high latency on your, on your internet speed, your call may be jittery. That You may not notice that when you're just browsing the internet because you could wait an extra few seconds for the web page to load or whatever you're doing online to come down. However, with a phone call, you can't because you the call has to come in expeditiously. Well, the first word has to come in first. It can't come in last. It all depends on, on, your, uh, on your internet line. So you're only as good as your weakest link. And you've got to do homework first to make sure that your network and your internet connection can support voice over IP. So your internet access is key to having good quality calls. Uh, there's four different pieces of the internet that we have to worry about, bandwidth, latency, jitter, and... Uh, and packet loss, and we'll get into those in detail, what we look for when we come to do a test on your internet connection to make sure it could support voice over IP. With voice over IP, you play a flat fee per phone per month, but no big upfront investment. There may be an upfront investment to clean up your network, to put better switches uh, and what have you, but it's a flat fee per phone per month, period. Every phone gets their own line, if you will. So if you had 30 phones, you get 30 lines. That's how a hosted phone system works. You do not own the phone system. You are renting it, and you only own the phone sets because you usually pay for those sets. And sometimes you can get a provider that will include the sets as part of the monthly fee, but you end up paying an extra 5 bucks or so a month per phone. So what that means also is uh, no more busy signals. When your clients call in now, and let's say you only have five traditional uh, telephone lines, all right, and all those lines are full, you may have... 20 phones, those lines are full. What happens when your clients call in right now? They get a busy signal, and they have to call back. When you use IP tele uh, telephony and technologies, you no longer have those types of problems. If all those, if everyone's on the line, uh, they, you can either go to an auto attendant, but as many phones as you have, that's how many phones will be able to ring at that time. Correct. Uh, so not the speed of the Internet, but the latency jitter and packet loss we talked about. So I'll explain that a little bit. Bandwidth is your speed on the Internet. It describes how fat of a pipe you are uh, being given by your provider with numbers correlating for a download and upload speed. And that's what people usually look at. And they only look at bandwidth. But with voice, you've got to look at four, three other things when it comes to your Internet connection. One, you've got to look at latency. Latency, this is the second part of the primary equation which determines how fast your link to other parties is. So a lower latency is always better, and it's usually uh, king on hardline ISP connections. So cellular and satellite ISPs or a wideband by Time Warner, which basically gives you best, offer, uh, best effort service, 
may get you good latency, may not, depends on the area that you're in and depends on how far you are from their CO, from their uh, equipment, depends on how many houses are in your area. When the kids come in uh, from school and they all jump online, uh, you notice your speed re gets reduced. So there's a lot of things that we have to look at to test your connection. Jitter, in plain terms, is the timing gaps between data packets being sent out on an internet lines. That jitter is, is high in millisecond count with low and non-existing jitter being the best. So, uh, so jitter is something that we measure as well to make sure that, because if you have his, his hesitation hiccups in your line, uh, obviously voice can't handle that because then it'll, the voice will also, you'll feel that and you'll hear that in the conversation. And last but not least is packet loss. If you have packet loss on your line, you should not do voice over IP because if you ever lose mail you've sent out in a, in a postal system, that's the real world equivalent to packet loss. So if I send something in the regular mail and it doesn't get there, it's like packet loss. I sent something out and it didn't get there. Uh, so good IP line has zero packet loss and that's what you want, especially if you're gonna do voice over IP. Internally to your network, that's on the outside out. Internally to your network, we should set up VLANs and put quality of service onto your switch so that your voice calls get priority over your data traffic so that when a call comes in, it's tagged by your switch and it says, oh, this is voice, I'm gonna send that first so that it sounds clear, it sounds crisp. And obviously be aware of porting old numbers back to a voice over IP provider. Some voice over IP provider will actually, after you port your numbers to them, will own your number and uh, then you can't get them back if you're trying to go somewhere else uh, and they can hold you hostage a little bit. Some stuff you need to be aware and familiar about when it comes to a hosted phone system using voice over IP. Again, this is the hosted. In other words, you're not, you're not owning the phone system, you're just buying the phone service and you get the phone set to use. Uh, so that's what a hosted phone system does and what you should be aware of. Some pitfalls of partnering with the wrong voice over IP provider, and we put that in there because really, We've seen uh, horror stories and people get voice over IP and they look at it from a pricing perspective only. They didn't do the due diligence. They didn't look at the network properly because they're traditional phone system providers that now are jumping on the, in the IP world and they're not IT people and they don't do the due diligence on the network. They may do the due diligence on what their, their system is providing, but the rest is up to you. They don't talk about it and then you end up having issues. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that uh, you, you do a discovery and planning. Really look at your network, what it can support, what it can't support. You do, then you do a network design, designing your network to fit a voice over IP migration. Then developing the network for voice over IP migration, changing switches, whatever you may need, and developing the actual phone system and functionality that comes in it. Then we do a deployment, then we do a training. If you skip any of those steps, you didn't do your due diligence and it becomes an issue. It becomes an issue because it gives you bad quality phone calls, slower, it slows down your network and it causes more network issues. Even the phone may be working, but all of a sudden your applications are running extremely slow and you're wondering what happened. Because you're running, you're adding more traffic on your network. The traffic is voice traffic, but you're adding it on. So we're trying to tell you that just be careful when you're looking at voice over IT and voice over IT providers because at the end of the day, they need to be IT people first. So 10 practices for moving to a cloud-hosted PBX. Uh, number one, HIPAA certainly does apply to cloud uh, voice over IP. So if you're a covered entity or a business associate regulated by HIPAA's uh, iron grip, I'll call it, because uh, right now they're doing a lot more audits than they ever have, then the question of HIPAA compliance should be one of the first items uh, you need to ask your voice over IP provider with. Many voice over IP providers will wiggle around this big issue by telling you that they are, uh, cover, they are covered under what they call the conduit exception under the HIPAA regulation. Uh, unless the, they are offering you service in which purely in the form of a simple analog phone line for calling and faxing, which is not what we're talking about here, that's not voice over IP, uh, they, they out there, you know, they, they are not under the conduit exception argument, and that does not work. So as such, this is an area with a lot of hot air around it. Uh, so I'll be quite honest here and say that it is likely 
that the voice over IP provider needs to be HIPAA compliant, understand that, encrypt the conversation coming across, because it's still a conversation that you may be having about your patient, talking about PHI and sent over the line. So it needs to be uh, HIPAA compliant. So HIPAA compliance is really an all-encompassing methodology, not only relating to the security of the technologies being used on your network and your backbone, but how calls are fully encrypted, how data like voicemail and faxes are stored, and the policies and auditing, uh, and auditing that you employ uh, to uphold these compliance standards. Uh, so it's important to know that voice over IP also has to adhere to HIPAA. Two, don't go with the cheapest provider around. That's usually not the best answer. Many of the low-cost providers out there don't even have telephone support and rely on email-based support or worse, forums that you have to go to to get support. An example of a very low-cost provider that advertises extremely cheap pricing but skips the phone support, uh, it's very call-centric, and obviously with a phone call, most importantly, it's one of the most communication pieces in your network besides email uh, and your system. So a phone call needs to be clear and it needs to be always available. And you need to have 24 by 7 support. So make sure your network can support voice over IP like we discussed. Four is know your voice over IP quality metrics, bandwidth, latency, loss, and jitter. And I put two shortcuts here uh, by a company called Ring Central. If you click on one of them, and I'll show you an example of that. Um, what this will do, and if you see the screen, test your connection's quality. And if I start the test, it's going to go through uh, our network. It's going to go through the connection, our Internet connection, and it's going to come back and tell us what kind of jitter we got, what kind of packet loss we got, where do we stand, uh, and will our network be able to support um, voice over IP or not. Uh, so when the test finished, I'm going to click to see the test is going here. I'll click the summary tab and see the, see the results. While this test is going, I'll come back to our presentation. And there's another capacity. How many concurrent phone calls can I make at the same time? That's another test that we should run before actually uh, deciding that your network can support voice over IP. So I'm going to run both those tests to show you what the results look like. Uh, they shouldn't take long to complete. Uh, the first test is almost done. But it's important to know those, and I'll come back to the results at the end of uh, that slide here. Because if you're going to do it right, you don't want any issues, and you want to make sure that when you install it, it's a seamless integration. Then you could use all the features, and we'll get again into the features of a system that is able to connect multiple locations together and make you a lot more efficient. There's features you may not need, may not know exist, and it would make you more efficient, saving you time, saving you money, really. Uh, wired is always better than Wi-Fi. So with voice over IP in general, especially on your network, there's Wi-Fi phones. But if you could have wired phones, we highly recommend that. VLANing your network correctly or setting up a virtual local area network, that's what VLAN sets up, uh, means, which meaning that the switch itself has to be intelligent enough to, to listen to your voice calls and, and give that voice call priority over your data traffic. Uh, and that's what VLAN will do. That way, it sets up a different network altogether, a virtual network that, so data and voice never really hit each other, don't cause collision, and doesn't cause network uh, 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 jitters or network uh, uh, bottlenecks. It's upload, not download speed, that kills uh, cloud voice over IP. So if you get a, a service from Time Warner, for instance, and they give you a, a 50 by 5 connection, 50 meg download, that means 50 meg download down to you, but only 5 meg upload up to you. That's an asymmetrical uh, internet access. Uh, and it's the upload speed that we, are, we need to be aware of because in any phone call, it's a two-way communication. You hear them, and they hear you. So both speeds need to be good and need to be, be able to handle the speed that we have. Uh, if you have to run new cabling, CAT5 works as well, but CAT60 wiring whenever possible. And I always use PoE, PoE switches, which PoE stands for power over Ethernet. That means that the computer cable that plugs into the back of the phone gives the phone power because the switch has PoE built in and powers the phones. You don't have to plug the phones into the wall then. Uh, but usually uh, switches with PoE capabilities are also uh, switches that are managed and allow us to set up VLAN. So if your switch cannot handle that, 
and you're going to want to go to a voice over IP, we may have to replace your switch. Because it's voice over IP, that means if your internet connection goes down, so does your phone system, uh, two internet connections, two WAN pipes are always better than one. So if you always have a secondary failover internet uh, connection set up so that way your phone calls don't drop. And don't skimp on your firewall. It's your brain of your network, right? So your firewall is the, the, the device that connects you to the internet, that connects you out to the world, and especially if we're going to run voice over it, that firewall also needs to give quality of service set up on it and needs to give uh, the voice priority over your data. So there's a lot going on to set up your network to make it properly, to make it set up properly for voice over IP to work well. Um, let's go back to our tests here and see what, what we, we got as results. So we got uh, that our jitter packet loss and score is 4.2 out of 5, which is great. We got green on both. We can support voice over IP. Almost zero jitter, zero packet loss. That's what you want to see on your connection. If you see big spikes, if you see uh, some uh, jitter and packet loss, if you go in the yellow or the red, you do not want to get voice over IP. Stick with a traditional phone system or improve your network and make changes on, with your ISP to be able to fix that problem before you move forward. Next is your capacity, and in our capacity, it says we can have 155 simultaneous calls. We have fiber connection here in our office, so that's, that's what I'm showing you. We need to do the due diligence first. Now, if this number was low, what we'll have to do is come in and see why is it low. What do we have to fix on your network first before we can even talk about what, what you being able to use a voice over IP system? It gives us the losses any graphs and, and uh, information, but we're in a good spot here. So let's go back to our presentation. So these are the 10 best practices for moving to a cloud-hosted PBS. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about IP telephony. Now, IP telephony, or an on-premise phone system, uh, so if you're not using IP telephony now, you need to upgrade. So if you're using a phone system that does not use your uh, cable that goes in between your PC and your wall and the phone is in the middle, you can go with a hybrid system. You should upgrade. You really want integration between your phone calls and your applications. And without IP telephony, you cannot do that. With traditional phone systems, they're separate systems. They don't talk to each other. You won't be able to do that. So at a minimum, whether being voice over IP or IP telephony, you should have an IP-based phone system in your environment. You gain a lot of features that way. So an, an on-premise phone system is a phone system that resides uh, and not hosted in the cloud. It resides in your office. It's not hosted in the cloud. Um, more upfront costs when it comes to an on-premise phone system. However, it may cost less in the long run. So do the math. It depends on how many phones you get, really, because remember, with a, host with a hosted phone system, you're playing a flat fee per phone per month. All right, well, if you have 30 phones, it may make more sense to buy uh, an on-premise phone system and only get maybe seven lines or 10 lines. It's three to one ratio usually. Uh, it will cost you less uh, month to month because you're not paying for 30 lines. However, it costs you more up front. And we'll go through those details in a second. But do the math. That's the important piece. And it's not a one-to-one -one ratio on on-premise. So in other words, on an on-premise, I can have 30 phones and only seven lines with a hosted phone platform is one-to-one. -one. If I have 30 phones, I have 30 lines. That's how they come. Uh, an on-premise phone system also supports IP telephony and voice over IP and supports more advanced features than a hosted phone system because it's on-site. So integration with your applications are usually a lot smoother and easier to accomplish versus a hosted phone system that will have to be written by that provider that uh, will integrate with your applications. Because a lot of them are not SAPI compliant, but will integrate with something like Salesforce or what have you. And we'll get into the detail of that. Um, so we've been talking about hosted versus on-prem. I put a little list of, uh, you know, the difference between them. So hosted PBX, lower initial equipment costs and setup costs. Uh, network qualification need to be performed because, we, like we said, we have to do the testing and make sure it works well. All IP 
PBX features programming is done by the customer, by you, because you get a portal that you log into and you've got to tweak it the way that, that you want to. Make sure your provider that you go with does that for you. There's usually no maintenance cost. You're paying that flat fee uh, per month per phone only, but all on-premise and remote phones and network devices are your responsibility. So if there's an issue, they're saying, well, the problem is your call coming from your network, so the problem may be on your network. They'll point the finger back at you. That's why we always recommend if you're going to get a phone uh, to get, get it from an IT provider that understands network technologies and will able to do the due diligence at first. Staff training is usually your responsibility. Make sure you have a lot of training to show you all the features so that you can get the benefits out of it. Low monthly service cost per phone, uh, but we'll do the math for you and show you the differences. Uh, extra, to, uh, it's easy to add an extra line. You basically call the provider and say, I need an extra phone. They pre-configure it, send it to you, you plug it in, and you're done. Upgrades and new features are included because it's a hosted phone. So in other words, you don't own it. They do an upgrade. They'll push that to all their, their clients at the same time. But again, it's hosted. That means you're running through the Internet. That means it's a little limited to what you, in comparison to what you can do when you bring something internally to your network because it's a lot more open. Uh, then extended features like conferencing may come at additional cost. Some hosted phones don't include all the features. So be aware of that. The on-premise PBX, on-premise phone system, if you will, has a higher initial cost than setup because you have to get that equipment, uh, which is a phone system. Now, that phone system can be resold later. It is worth something, but you have to pay for that up front. Sometimes you could bundle it all in and pay for it on a monthly basis over a course of a few years, and after maybe a year or two or three, depending on how much you want to extend that to, you own it, and then your monthly bid becomes less if you don't want to come up with that initial big dollars up front. Potentially, it has a higher maintenance cost because there is a maintenance add-on add, add uh, to, uh, besides your phone lines, there is maintenance that you have to pay on that equipment. However, if you're not using a one-to-one -one ratio, the entire number becomes less expensive. Lower monthly costs after expenses are covered. Ability to SIP trunk to get lower call costs. So uh, SIP trunk, SIP stands for Session Initiated Protocol. You could use a native SIP trunk SIP is like a, a phone, phone line that is new. It allows, it gives you a lower cost phone call. You don't have to make that call via the internet. Um, you can though voice, use a voice over IP provider to make that call. And on-premise phone system also have usually provide uh, better quality of the call. And you and we have to qualify your network if we're going to put an IP based system to make sure, just like we did with the hosted, that it can support IP on the network. So I wanted to show you some of the, the differences between them. Uh, and obviously, you need to train and use best practices when both those solutions uh, when it comes to phone systems. Uh, so what's the pros and cons between them, uh, big ones? Uh, the pros, we'll start with those. On the hosted side, providers have more resources than users, so new feature sets are possible. New feature installation is handled by a provider to avoid confusion. So if you need a new feature, they'll do that for you. Uh, picking and canceling virtual numbers is easy and fast because you usually get a portal you go to and it's all web-based and what have you. So it has, has its pros. Moving a phone system is easy because it's in the cloud. So you basically take the phone, plug it somewhere else, and it starts working. You could have multiple locations. You could move phones from one to the other. It won't make a difference. There isn't a phone system. Uh, that you have to worry about. That's a big pro for a hosted uh, platform. Obviously, if you're one office within the four walls, that's not a huge benefit. But if you have nine locations and people move, uh, uh, work between all locations, that's a big benefit. Hosted provides edge border controllers or various other kind of NAT software to help navigate routers. Uh, it makes hosted allows you to link basically a, a link multiple locations together easily uh, because the system itself is in the cloud accessible. Every other office then it has the same kind of priority and it's all accessible from your internet access. And then patches and upgrades are done by the provider. Now this is on the hosted side, all the positive that you get out of it. From a feature perspective, they both have similar features. From pros on an on-premise phone system, 
having an on-premise PBS gives you control to create and adjust delete users easily and through the system itself. You could have open source and different uh, sets that can be added without any additional fees because you own the phone system. So you own the capability. You have a lot more control when you own the phone system. Larger environments get an on-premise phone system because they have control over what they can do uh, and they don't have to worry about uh, utilizing any of their bandwidth. Current carriers do not have to be changed because if you're with an on-premise phone system, you could have analog lines, voice over IP lines, um, uh, traditional PRI, digital lines, whatever it may be. You don't have to change that. We plug that into the back of the system. Voice over IP uh, trunks can also be used, like I said. Server ownership reduce, uh, reduces expenses over time. We talked about that. We'll do the math for you. Uh, no do-it-yourself time as part, of, as part of you because this is a phone system and it comes with maintenance. You call the provider. They do everything for you. So professional training of staff is key. And with SIP trunk, loss of Internet and catastrophic events doesn't affect you So because it's on-premise. So if you lose your Internet, your phone still works. So these are the pros between them. The cons on the hosted side, connection and voice quality are a result of internet, con uh, internet connection. So make sure you have a good internet connection. Run the test that we've discussed, but that's definitely a negative because if your internet connection goes down, you lose calls. If your internet connection is slow and slows down for whatever reason, you may have a virus on your network that slows down your internet connection. It could be a provider issue. Your calls quality will suffer. Loss of internet results in a loss of phone service. Uh, flexibility of system is limited when it comes to uh, a hosted provider because you don't own the system. You can't do anything that you want to it. They give you a certain parameters and certain features. You can't uh, load open source software. You can't really link it to your existing applications. It's a lot harder to do. Customization of features may be slow or unavailable depending on your provider. So if you want something special done, uh, your provider may or may decide not to do it because all, the bulk of their clients may not need it. Uh, when you own your own system, you can do whatever you want. Fees can be increased and cancellation fees can be charged. That's uh, something that you got to be aware of when you sign a hosted agreement with a provider. And instability of providers may vary within operation and finance. In other words, make sure whoever you're partnering with have been around for a while, know the industry, our IT are based throughout through IT because really it's touching your network and it has been around that and it's not going away because a lot of the new voice over IP providers kind of uh, claim bankruptcy and close shop. So you don't want to be stuck in that middle. On the negatives when it comes to an IP BBX and an on premise phone system, on premise IP BBX needs a provide uh, needs a provider who can manage it properly. So whoever you're buying it from, you're gonna have a relationship with those people. Uh, with that provider, they're going to have to do updates and maintenance and they have to train you and they have to manage it for you. So uh, that's a big something that you need to be aware of. Expansions may result in complicated projects. So if you want to expand your phone system to additional phones, depending on how you bought the on-premise, you may have to buy an expansion module or whatever it may be. You're responsible for the hardware when it comes to an on-premise phone system. An on-premise IPBBX manufacturer could go out of business. But that's the manufacturer. However, you're dealing with the dealer. So just as long as the dealer is uh, around and have long, uh, longevity, that's not really a huge con for me. Technicians may need to, call, to be called for upgrades, patches on softwares. That's part of the maintenance. Really, you don't need to call them. But you are responsible for your phone system at that point. They're there to support you. And you have a maintenance contract with them. They have to log, log in. They have to schedule it with you. They have to do the updates and maintenance. They can't do it behind the scenes like a hosted uh, phone because uh, the phone system is at your location, not theirs. And then loss of power or PBX failure will result in callers not being able to get through, which stops business operations on that SIP provider. Let's face it, loss of power means loss of phone. Uh, but that happens on the hybrid, on the hosted and the cons. So we talked about hosted and on-premise. Uh, on the hosted and on-premise, sorry, not cons. These are the cons for both of them. We talked about the hosted and on-premise. Now let's talk about the next, which is truly uh, the hybrid system, something that takes the best of both worlds. While cloud-based and on-premise uh, deployments are common and standalone options, the hybrid phone system roll rollout 
is a rapidly growing option for businesses of all sizes. So hybrid deployment combined both hosted and on-premise solutions to better meet the unique needs uh, of, your, of your company. So PBX, which stands for uh, private branch exchange. So hybrid PBX has many of the same Greek features you can expect from a voice over IP provider, including call rules and auto attendant and hold queues, et cetera. And the hybrid PBX also has the capacity for virtual conference room, fax over IP, and video conferencing. Uh, it takes the best of both worlds. It takes everything that the uh, on-premise does. It takes the, everything that the cloud does and kind of mold them together. Um, calls from one office to the other go through the hybrid phone system uh, easily, so there is no long no long distance charges uh, associated anymore because it still uses voice over IP and it uses traditional phone lines. So it's the best of both worlds. War worlds, <laughs> integrated voice over IP with an on-premise phone system. It combines existing legacy PBX equipment with voice over IP. Great features including call rules, auto attendant, and whole queues. Um, the most important feature of a hybrid PBX is that it, if either the legacy PBX or a voice over IP server isn't working, it automatically switches over to the other network. So you have redundancy when it comes to a hybrid phone system. And one of the biggest benefits to saving uh, to having a hybrid to PBX is for remote offices and secondary locations. It's easy to do. Now, they, hybrid PBX costs about the same uh, as an on-premise PBX because uh, there's some dollars that you have to invest up front. However, the technology is a little different. So some of the features that the hybrid PBX will be able to do for us, uh, one, Application loaded on a desktop, you could actually load your application, an application that acts as a soft phone, and your laptop or desktop can become your phone. You don't actually need a physical phone anymore. You have a mobile app, and this is a picture of our mobile app. This is actually off my phone. Uh, this is the Avaya mobile app for the hybrid system. And basically, uh, I can make calls from here, receive calls to my mobile phone. I can transfer calls from my actual phone system that to my mobile phone and vice versa. So think about this. You're at your office and you're on the phone and you've got a meeting, you really got to take off, but you don't want to end that conversation. It's a good conversation uh, and you want to continue having it. You can actually click a button on the software. It will auto transfer the call from, the, from your office phone to your mobile phone. As soon as the mobile phone rings, you pick it up. The caller does not know you've done that. Now they're on your mobile phone you could then leave with your mobile phone and then go to your meeting and be able to continue that conversation at the same time. You could then, when, if, if uh, you are coming back and you still have a call on the, on the line, you can transfer it back to the system. You can transfer from your mobile phone to anywhere else within the system. Features are very strong. Wi-Fi calling is also very strong. It uses your Wi-Fi to make the calls. Transfer between mobile devices and phone system, as I explained it. And while on the phone, you can transfer from uh, mobile device and to your phone system and vice versa. You get detailed reporting, something called cradle to grave, which means if uh, you, you could get a report that will show you a call that came in and what happened to that call. Most reporting you get on a hosted platform or a, a, an on-premise is a little limited unless you get a reporting engine. And what that does is basically if you get a call, it tells you when you got the call, how long the call was for, who picked it up. Uh, and that's about it. With Cradle or Grave reporting, you're able to get a much more detailed call reporting. It tells you when the call came in, if it was put on hold for how long, it got transferred to somebody else, somebody picked it up from there, and then what happens to that? Did they put it on hold again? Did they transfer it to somebody else? So. From beginning to end, did they go in a queue? Did they leave a voicemail? From beginning to end, you find out what happened to that conversation. It gives you a better understanding of what's happening within your company, and it gives you a much uh, a reliable way to be able to get that information and understand who's performing for you, and it gives you better, you mine better info out of your phone system to make better decisions. And it, and it also comes with a wall board. So if you have a call center, if you have a queue, if you need a queue to be set up, if you have uh, many people answering calls or making calls, uh, you could do analytics and wallboard uh, reporting, and it could be on a big screen in the middle of your call center and what have you. 
there's a lot of features that a hybrid phone system is able to give us. It gives us all the features of an on-premise and all the features of a hosted and mold them together. So a hybrid to me is the best way to look at it. The question is how much do they cost? When I say on-premise is on-premise uh, slash hybrid, it's really on-premise costs the same as a hybrid system. You just have to make sure that whatever on-prem system you're buying is also hybrid enabled. So I put two examples here uh, to talk about cost and to show you uh, how much cost, really, what, what you need to look at. And I'm looking at an example of a company that needs 20 phones. Uh, so on average, uh, on the hosted side, average of $30 per phone per month, so that's 600 bucks a month. However, you don't have a lot up front. Phones are usually 150 to 250 depending on the model that you like, if it has color display, yes or no, how many buttons does it have. So you decide on the phone that you like. So usually on a hosted platform, up front is about $3,000. It's not a lot of money, uh, sometimes less if you have less phones and what have you. So if you do the math, uh, the total cost over one year uh, for a hosted flat, uh, for a hosted phone system is about ten thousand two hundred bucks because if you look at six hundred times twelve plus the three thousand uh, dollars over three years is twenty four thousand six hundred because the six hundred dollars uh, keeps accumulating and over five years is thirty nine thousand right so in the long run a hosted uh, ends up costing you uh, over five years thirty nine thousand dollars on with the twenty phones on an on premise well. You pay for the lines you need with an on-premise. It's not one-to-one -one ratio like it is with a hosted. So usually a three-to-one ratio at a $30 per line per month, for 20 phones, you'll need about seven lines at $30 per line, which is what equals $210 a month. You can see the difference here per monthly in an on-premise and hybrid versus a hosted. That's for a 20-phone system. Now, if you need four, it may make sense for you to get uh, hosted phone system. You need five, something smaller. Usually less than 10 is the number, uh, depending. Uh, depending on the amount of calls you're making, depending on the amount of phone lines you're going to need, depending on your ratio. So this is questions that we should ask, and we do our due diligence before we decide which type of phone system you're, that you should get. Uh, so phone system are usually an average of $800 per user if you're going to own it. So a total upfront cost of 16000 is an average for 20 uh, phone, phone, uh, phone system example. So the first year costs more because you have 16000 plus 210 per month. So you're at 18520 Within three years, though, you've already recouped your money and you're saving a little bit more money than the host did. And over five years, you're saving a lot, more, a lot of money. So it depends on your situation, what makes sense for you or not. If you have a a disparate company where you have people that work out of the house or people that work remotely a lot or people and you have multiple locations all over the country but not a lot of people per location a hosted platform may be the answer for you if you have uh, uh, one main site a lot of smaller sites or a few bigger sites and on-premise phone system may be the best one it's, it all depends on the math and the equations that we put in front of you so uh, when we do due diligence for you, this is what we're going to go through. So the bottom line here is you need to get serious about communication systems. In other words, you need to know that there are so many more features and capabilities that you're probably not utilizing right now. And there's ways to save money monthly, as we showed you. And if you do that, you get all those features and save money. So best of both worlds, a win-win situation. So if it's a five-step so upgrading your organization. Number one is evaluate your need as we discussed. First thing you've got to do is find out what your needs are. You don't want features you're never going to use. You don't want things that are above or beyond that will just be in your way and something that you're not going to be uh, utilizing. You don't want to pay for something that you're not going to use. So you need to know exactly what your usage is going to be, what your needs are. So we need to evaluate those. Then, then we determine the best solution for you at that point. And then we create an action plan for that best solution, how we're going to implement it, because there's porting of numbers, there is uh, training, there's a lot that needs to happen in the middle to make sure that that happens. So after we create the action plan, we implement and train. And after that, we maintain. So five steps that needs to happen, and if you skip, you skip any of those, if training is not done well enough, you're not going to get the benefits out of it. Your employees and your end users will be frustrated. Just make sure that you don't skip any steps, you do your due diligence, you know what you're doing, and you do it right.
So the first step is free at no cost or obligation to you. We'll come to your office, conduct a voice over IP evaluation. We don't really have to come to your office. When I mean come to your office, we can log in remotely and do a lot of those tests. We'll perform the QoS and the capacity testing that we've discussed. We'll evaluate your current phone and internet bills and contract. Would you determine your telephony needs and your best phone system for you and provide a report that will help you make the right phone decision for your business. Uh, for any, anybody that signs up for us today, they'll get free uh, security training. This is something that usually costs $500, absolutely free. Just for signing up, you don't have to buy anything. Just for us to come in and do uh, the evaluation for you. Uh, this, this is a free training for your employees. Uh, that will give them uh, and make them a lot more capable of understanding the threats that are happening online, uh, phishing emails, how to secure yourself better, what to look for. It's, a, it's basically a course that you take online. It takes about half an hour. You take an exam at the end of it, and you get uh, a certificate that says that you've been trained. Um, this is a very valuable tool for anybody that works uh, on PCs every day. It makes you just a better consumer, a better user. And we're going to give you something else for free as well. For anybody that signs up, we'll get a white paper on the question you should be asking any voice over IP provider so that you are then an educated consumer. You'll know what to ask. You'll know what to expect for as an answer, and you'll know what to do. Uh, we'll give you that white paper that we wrote, and we'll share it with you. So what to do now is just contact Jamie Stewart at jstewart at mvpworks.com, or this is her direct number, 716 Three six two seven five nine two. We'll take the first uh, six on a first come first serve basis um, for this free consultation. Uh, it just takes time for us to do it. We're not charging for it. We just want to make sure that uh, we do your due diligence. We show you a few things that will be beneficial. Hope you guys found this training beneficial. I hope you understand uh, the differences between all the different uh, phone systems out there, all the different uh, phone lines out there what the terminology means. Uh, if you have any questions at any time, feel free to contact me directly, and uh, I can go through it and answer any questions you may have. hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, thank you for joining uh, this uh, webinar the, on the MVP uh, webinar series that we've been putting on. Uh, we're going to be consistent on putting them on. We just want to make sure that we provide technology that works, technology information for you to understand what options you have so that way we're doing our job and that's why you hire us not only to fix your issues but to show you what else is out there we are your virtual cios and we take that very seriously hope you guys find this beneficial uh if you have any questions let us know and you guys have a great day uh, bye bye